everyone, guess what time it is? Yes, it's everyone's favorite day, White Guy with Acoustic Guitar Review Day. I never get tired of that clip. Yep, it's time to take a look at my least favorite genre. I am as tired of hearing white guys with acoustic guitars as you are tired of hearing me complain about it. Yay. Actually, I feel like I kind of wrote myself into a corner when I came up with that phrase. There's plenty of good music made by acoustic guitar playing Caucasian males. It's not the acoustic guitar's fault that it attracts people without talent. Everyone has to start somewhere. Nor is it the acoustic guitar's fault that it's the instrument of choice of self-impressed douches who only know how to strum Wonderwall. And it's not its fault that my parents saddled me with a gigantic instrument that I couldn't drag out into the quad to play for college girls. And besides, while there are plenty of them that are as interchangeable as they are talentless, I'm not one of those racists who think all white guys with acoustic guitars are the same. There are many different varieties. And as a spokesman for the subgenre of, hey, I can actually play more than Wonderwall on this thing, thank you very much, we have our good buddy Ed. Sing! I mean, there's white guys with acoustic guitars, but Ed Sheeran is one of the whitest. And despite that, he's one of the biggest pop stars alive. I mean, this is a guy who's been romantically connected to both Ellie Goulding and Taylor Swift. I, I mean, yes, the tabloids connect everyone with Taylor Swift. But still, the point is that at some point it became plausible that this man could have hooked up with Taylor Swift. But you know, I think I'm okay with that. Ed Sheeran is not a guy I started out liking because of my natural prejudices, but I think even before he started filling the Justin Timberlake-shaped hole in our hearts, I think I did recognize something in him that set him apart from the average folk singer doof. I recognize that he has a higher than average talent for hooks and rhymes, that he's willing to expand his horizons beyond the typical four chord strumming, that he was smart enough to realize that a horrible song he wrote when he was a kid could make him a lot of money, but not so much that he'd stain his own reputation by singing it himself. When your legs don't work like they and that's what makes this latest regression such a disappointment of a song. Not just for Sheeran, but for the pop charts as a whole. I, I don't know, when I first started this show it was all about Katy Perry and Justin Bieber, and now it's Sam Smith and John Legend. When did pop music become so tasteful? Even Lady Gaga is recording jazz standards and show tunes, Wiz Khalifa is releasing funeral ballads, I don't like it. But you know, songs like this, you know, people like them. You gotta have something to slow dance to at the middle school prom. Now we got this piece of garbage. So yeah, they're never going away. It's stupid to try and rail against them as a whole. But this one specifically, no, 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 no. I was sick of it the first time I heard it. I'm certainly no less sick of it six months later, which of course it's around six months later because one of these songs catches on, it's like gum on your shoe. Like, you know how I said that Ed Sheeran's folk rapper thing was the version of early Jason Mraz that wasn't totally embarrassing? Well, unfortunately, that's not the Ed Sheeran that showed up. The Ed Sheeran that showed up here is, this, this is a, this is more like a John Mayer song, which we didn't need any more of. I mean, it sounds just, I was surprised to find out that John Mayer didn't collaborate. It, it sounds like him. It sounds like More Than Words, as covered by John Mayer, which is kind of funny, I mean. Mayer wanted all that pop star swagger his entire career so very badly, and Ed Sheeran, of all people, scooped it all up. Matter of fact, I thought it was really funny when they performed this song at the Grammys together. It's, it's like when you get fired and they make you train your replacement. But regardless, this song, which is still in the top 10 right now, is also probably his worst. Yeah, that happens sometimes, someone's biggest song being their worst. Ahem. I mean, what's what's going on here? When your legs don't work like they used to before, and I can't sweep you off of your feet. Well, I mean, you can you can still pick her up. I mean, she doesn't need to be able to stand to do that. As a matter of fact, she's probably gonna need you to do that more for her now. Will your mouth still remember the taste of my love? That was the most disgusting possible way you could have put that. Will your mouth still remember the taste of my love? It does. It it remembers it being kind of salty. Be loving you till we're 70. Like I'm not, I'm trying not to be too harsh here because it, it's not like this song is outright offensive or bothersome, but I really can't think of a single thing about this song that works. Not even Ed Sheeran singing. The baby now. 
I mean, it's not that he's a bad singer or anything, but he's, he's not a Sam Smith or a Bruno Mars either, you know? So, so in the chorus, you know, you listen to him, he's, he's just trying too hard. It's out of his range. Matter of fact, I think that's the whole problem with the entire song. And to make this point, I'm gonna point to a white guy with acoustic guitar song that I actually like. Hey there, Delilah, what's it like? Yes, I'm on record for saying I kind of like Hey There, Delilah. And before you even start writing your angry letters, don't bother. Numerous complaints have already been filed to the Department of Music Critic Regulation trying to get my license revoked. And I only got put on probation, so, yeah. Now, I get why many people actually really hate this song. It's annoyingly precious. It's clumsy as hell. But what makes it work for me personally is the framing. He's singing from the persona of a not very talented guy who wrote a song in five minutes for his girlfriend and is singing it over Skype or something. That's sweet. It's a very clever conceit that turns all the song's weaknesses into strengths. That's also the same trick Bernie Taupin pulled when he wrote your song for Elton John, which is one of the all-time greatest pop songs in history despite having one of the all-time worst lyrics. If I was a sculptor, huh. but then again, no. Yes, that metaphor was probably going to be corny, Bernie. You, you realize you could just cross it out and write something different there. But like I said, the framing is what makes it work. And Ed Sheeran is uh, he's trying for something similar. I mean, it's right there in the title. I'm thinking out loud, maybe. So he's just, you know, thinking out loud here, just spitballing, you know, off the cuff, ad libbing. Yeah, no. Look, if I have one major problem with Ed Sheeran, it's that his songs tend to be overwritten. If Ed Sheeran were a movie, he'd be Juno. It's always been my biggest problem with him, whether it be that awful, crumbling like pastries line in the A-Team, or this groaner. I know you love Shrek, cause we watched it 12 times. Maybe you're hoping for a fairy tale too. Yes, that classic romantic fairy tale. Shrek. Who wouldn't want to live in that beautiful fantasy full of poop and fart jokes and Eddie Murphy? How in the world does someone misunderstand Shrek, of all things? And even on Thinking Out Loud, where he's trying to sound as relaxed as possible, he still fills it with these overcomposed, multi-syllable rhymes that call attention to themselves. Ever grow. Oh, it's evergreen. Him calling his song Thinking Out Loud is like Lil Wayne naming a song Tastefully Pleasant. Thinking Out Loud. Hey everyone, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna improvise here, you know, just jam for a bit, see what comes out. Let's see. When my hair's all but gone and my memory fades And the crowds don't remember my name Oh, get this humble brag crap out of here! Boo! Boo! Yes, I know you're famous. There was zero reason to bring it up. Like, I knew Ed Sheeran kind of wanted to be a rapper, but he could have skipped the part where he uses love songs to brag about his success. And the crowds don't remember my name. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm glad that he realized his fame and looks don't last, but I, I just don't see why he had to even mention it. The great sin of acoustic guitar songs is that they always sound so impressed with themselves, so even when he's trying to self-deprecate, it sounds phony. Also, if I were him, I wouldn't be too harsh about losing my hair anyway. It's, uh, it's, it's not his best feature. What else? What else? Baby, your smile's forever in my mind and memory. Yeah. Kiss me under the light of a thousand stars. Boy, if this is him thinking out loud, Ed Sheeran sure has a boring inner monologue. I'm thinking out loud, maybe. Okay, that's twice in two songs he's used the phrase we found love. Let it go until our roads are changed, singing we found love in a local rage. No. Okay, on that one it was clever and funny because it, it was a Rihanna reference. And on this one, was, was, was that also a Rihanna reference? Maybe we found love right where we are. Like, hey. We didn't have to go to a hopeless place to find love, it's, it's right here. I mean, I don't think that's what Ed was trying to do, but 
I don't know, maybe it was. Obviously the song's been on his mind. But also, otherwise, it doesn't really make any sense. You and her found love right where you are. Well, yeah, duh. I mean, you got two people, they're in love, they're here, where else would they find it? The mall? Is there a possibility you were gonna find love somewhere else? Was one of you still looking? Maybe we found love right where we are. I don't get where he's going with that. Why would you say that or even think that, let alone think it out loud? It only makes sense if one of them was about to take a sex cruise or something and Ed's trying to change their mind. Well, me, I fall in love with you every Look, just. None of, the, none of his lyrics connect. He doesn't sound like he means any of this. Like, I did not like the A-Team. I thought it was prettified bullshit that had no relevance whatsoever to its subject matter. But I did, in fact, think that Ed Sheeran was moved by the plight of an actual drug addict. And don't, that, you know, that was obviously inspired by complicated feelings about a tangled relationship. This, nothing. All I hear is, wedding songs can make me a lot of money. And I should like this. I like wedding songs. Most of my favorite love songs include the words always or forever because, you know, I like the idea of eternal love. But I, I will say this for thinking out loud. It's a song about growing old together, which we don't have enough of. We'll be loving you till we're 70. Growing old together means growing together and, and that's what marriage is to me it's this idea that you find that someone that helps you become a better smarter person who changes and learns from their mistakes i'll just keep on making the same mistakes hoping that you'll understand or you could you know not by the time you're 70, maybe you should not be making the same mistakes because by then it will definitely get old. What's even the point of this song? Oh honey, I know I'm not gonna be famous for the rest of my life and maybe my youth will run out and my looks might fade, but there's one thing that will last forever and that's me being an idiot and doing the same stupid thing over and over again. Good luck dealing with it. Love ya. Like, I don't, I don't know what to say here. This is just an uninspired song. Like, the oh-so-intricate rhymes work when he's going a mile a minute like he's trying to be Eminem with a guitar, but when you slow him down, all the effort and the over just really start to get to you. And I, I don't hear any romance here. It's not even skeevy like John Mayer's songs. At least those had a pulse. This is just dull. This is the wonderful tonight of the 2010s. It's a boring song by a disinterested sounding singer who could be doing much better than this, complete with uninspiring solo. So here's my advice, Ed. Instead of singing this song, here's a better song that I wrote. It's called Keeping My Thoughts to Myself. Here, let me play it for you. Man, I like my version way more. Well, we are. A horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course. That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. A. Go right to the... Said maybe, you're gonna be the one that saves me. And after all, you're my wonder.